Welcome back to Getting Started with Coda iOS. It's time to dive into the heart of Coda iOS, the editor. Before we begin, you should already have created at least one site to connect to. If you haven't yet, check out the first video in the Getting Started with Coda iOS series. Okay, onward. To open a file, tap on it, then tap Edit in Coda. And here we are, the editor. When editing your document, Coda has some great features to make your work even easier. Tap the More button here to change the context keys, depending on what you need. Alongside these, note that you can tap to undo, tab, or comment your code. Useful, right? And Coda's autocomplete will save you a ton of time, giving you suggestions from the syntax mode you're writing in. Tap and hold to get the super loop, a Coda exclusive that gives you extra magnification so you can put your insertion point right where you need it. And when you make a selection, check out your range of options. In addition to the standard copy and paste options, you can comment your code, indent, dedent, end tab, and dtab. So now that we know how to edit our document, let's check out these editor specific actions at the top right. This is the clips button where you can save and group little bits of code so that you can easily reuse them. Switch between clips that you use globally, regardless of which site you're connected to, clips you need on a per site basis, and clips that are mode dependent. So you always have the relevant code snippets for your syntax mode. To create a new clip, tap the plus button and give your clip a name. You can also add a tab trigger for this clip so it will auto complete for you as you're typing. I'll make a clip of a CSS pulse animation because why not? I'll enter flash as the trigger for it. This way, I'll get an auto complete suggestion for it whether I type pulse or flash. You can probably think up a better tab trigger than this. Another handy feature of clips is that they can contain placeholders for data to be added later. Just tap Insert Placeholder to see your options. Named will create a custom placeholder that appears as a blue token in the editor after the clip is inserted. You can just type over it with your desired text. Insertion point determines where you want the editor's text insertion point, you know, that blinking vertical bar, to be after you've placed your clip. Date inserts the current date in month, day, two-digit year format. File name will insert the name of the current file. Parent folder inserts the name of the parent folder for the current file. Site name inserts the name of the current site. Remote URL inserts the remote URL for the current site. Text selection will be replaced with the currently selected text when the clip is inserted. And previous word is a placeholder that'll be replaced with the word immediately before the insertion point when the clip is inserted. Now I'll hit save and let's try it. It works. I can also use this clip by tapping the clips button, then choosing the clip. Before we move on, I want to point out that not only can you save clips to use globally, per site or per mode, but you can also put them in handy groups to keep them organized. And like your sites and keys, you can sync your clips across devices using Panic Sync. See the About Panic Sync video for more details on how to do that. To the right of the Clips button is Find and Replace. Our Find and Replace feature is really handy. Type in the text you'd like to find in the Find field. If you want to replace the found text with something else, type your alternate text in the Replace field and tap Replace. You can use the Next and Previous buttons to move between the occurrences of the text in the Find field, which will flash to get your attention. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, there's more. You can use placeholders in Find and Replace too. Let's say you want to use Find and Replace on text that varies, but which has a defined pattern. Let's say I have a bunch of different fonts defined here, and I want to replace them all with a single font. I can type font family, and then tap the placeholder button, this star icon here. It will add a placeholder, number one in this case. The placeholders are numbered sequentially. I add another single quote to the other side to finish the pattern. Now, in the replace field, I can type font family colon quote chrono unquote and tap replace for each instance that I want to change. Cool. And you can use placeholders in the replace field too. Check this out. Let's say I have a couple of images whose heights and widths I just want to swap like this. So what I can do is enter width equals quote placeholder one unquote and height equals quote placeholder two unquote in the find field and then just swap the placeholder values in the replace field like so. Nice. So you can see how this find and replace function can go beyond the basics. This is the preview button. Tap this button to quickly open a preview of the current document in Coda iOS's built-in web browser. And finally, this check mark is the save button. When you make a change to your document, it'll turn green. Tap it to save and upload your changes. That's it for the editor. Be sure to watch the rest of the videos in this Getting Started series to become a Coda iOS expert in no time. 
For more information, visit panic.com.